Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and today is just a quick little update video. Um, these next couple of weeks are going to be a little bit hectic on this channel. As you know, normally on Mondays, we drop a Monday mystery. We are in the middle of going through the Emerald Tablets, and we're doing that also in, in conjunction on Aquarius Rising Africa as well. So I've already done the whole fifth tablet here on my channel. We're still working our way through that on Aquarius Rising Africa, hence why there is no Monday mystery today on my channel and just a simple channel update video for you guys. Um, tomorrow, there will be the, the, I believe tomorrow's the last installment of our Hathor material, sadly. And the next week will be, we will be starting with the Octurian Anthology. I'll put a link to this down in the description box below. There will be no Magdalene drop this Wednesday because I am actually going to be interviewing Hillis, whom I've gotten to know through. He's kind of like my um, point person with ASEA for the sponsorship with ASEA. And he's going to be coming on my channel tomorrow to talk about his relationship with ASEA, the benefits that he has, has had as well. So we'll be looking out for that on Wednesday. We will also be this week filming again with our girl Sarah the tea leaf reader to look to see what April has in store for us so that should be available at the end of this week um, I am super excited because we are going to be getting back to a lot of deep dives on this channel which is what my channel is really known for is the deep dives and I ha as I've gotten busier and as my platform has gotten uh, bigger I haven't had as much time to dedicate to research as I did at the beginning of my journal but I'm really excited because of the ASEA sponsorship it has afforded me the ability to take more time to continue to research these conspiracies research these like crazy crazy stories from our past to try to get to the bottom of what's really happening on our timeline. Um, if you are new to the channel or if you, you found me like halfway through my journey, I have a ton of old videos of old projects I worked on in a playlist called Conspiracies. I will put that playlist down in the description box below in case there's stuff you missed and you're you're hungry for more knowledge. I would love for you to go back and look at some of my old videos. Maybe there are some stories there if you want us to relook at. We can relook at. Like we've already done uh, we re-looked at the werewolf of georgia we we i did that was one of the first stories i did and then i recovered it a while ago with my friend angie who's also from georgia because the more we learn the more we can kind of see some 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 blind spots that we didn't see at the beginning of the journey so please check out that that playlist i will also add my nefarious new orleans playlist i will add in my scandalous savannah playlist as well so you guys can check out some of those old stories if you are new to the channel and you're hungry for some of the deep dives that i'm kind of known for so once again starting next week i am going to be doing some traveling i'm not going to be in atlanta i'm gonna be gone for a little bit so you are going to see me on the road i am going to be working really hard to prep some videos to already be scheduled to drop while i am away so some of the regularly scheduled material will be dropping um, i am so grateful again to nicole from healing disclosures for asking to interview me about my work in the slums of india I've gotten so many people have reached out to me because I've never really had the chance to tell the full story of how I started, how I accidentally ended up in the slums and how that accidentally led to me opening up a full foundation to really help slum kids and to help street dogs. The street dogs got added into that foundation as well. And I was thinking, I forgot to say on my interview with Nicole that um, the safe house that I work with also, so whenever we collect dogs and we're going to bring dogs back and rescue the dogs as well, when those dogs need a safe place to stay while we're waiting to get them into the airplane to get them over to the United States or to Canada, since those are the two countries that can take the dogs, we, st we take them to the safe house. So the kids at the safe house that we've also gotten from the slums um, get to work with the dogs as well. So when you rescue, when you agree to adopt a dog through my foundation as well, those dogs first, before they were put on the airplane and sent to America or Canada, were living, were transported and were living at the safe house with the rescued slum kids. And so the slum kids get Get to experience taking care of an animal they get to actually learn how to care for you know in a lot of ways they're the ones being cared for but in this situation they're able to practice 
compassion, empathy, shelter, love for a being that's less fortunate than even they are. And so they kind of work hand in hand. And I totally forgot to mention that um, with Nicole, that that's where we actually do take the dogs in transit so that they get loved on, especially when there are puppies involved. The kids learn how to like feed the puppies, all that kind of stuff. And so um, the two very much go hand in hand. Of course, we are all God's creatures, animals and humans alike. We are as the the gospel of the Nazarene way says, do the animals not, are they not your brothers and sisters? Do they not breathe the same air that you breathe? And so I wanted to add that in. And we are definitely, Nicole and I are definitely going to be talking about creating a crowd crowdsourcing for funds so that we can go ahead and I can send that money over to the safe house. Um, as if you saw the video, which if you didn't see the video, I will place in the link below. Um, as I said, uh, I can't really give links out because I do have a public platform now and there very much is a cartel. And so um, we have to be very private about where people, how, how much we expose about where these locations are. But what I will do once we have funds raised, what I will do is I will send it over to the safe house. I know the person who owns the safe house and I will have her take some pictures and send what she can send for us to put on a public platform so you can see exactly where your, your money went. Um, when we do crowdsourcing for the Mysore Foundation, for the slum kids, for the dogs, we don't take a penny of that money. I've said that with Nicole, especially when I'm going to India. I'm going to be in India anyway. That's how I look at it. Regardless of whether there was slum kids or not, I'm going to be in India because that's where my school is. And so there's no need for me to take any money from the raised funds for the slum kids for my own self for my food, my school, anything like that. I've already got that. That's already in the plan. That's already in the works. The money that's given to the slum kids or the street dogs is in a totally separate checking account that I have. And that directly feeds into these children and the dogs. And we do with the Mysore Foundation, we do have ways for people to specify whether they strategically want their money going to the dogs or to the children. Most people don't care. They just say, spend it where you need it. I also want to remind you guys that as we said in the video, $10, 10 United States dollars will take care of a child for a year. So we're not talking about big spending here for us. You know, if you can spare $5, like if you can spare a dollar, that's going to go a long way in India and it's going to really help out the safe house. It's really going to help her, the, my friend who owns the safe house, continue to fund the safe house, continue to bring food in, continue to bring doctors in, continue to bring teachers in to really help these children have a fair shot at life. If you are a teacher yourself or if you are involved in any uh, programs in your own country and would like to perhaps be involved in the pen pal program um, that we have with the safe house with children from america or england or canada or wherever um to actually become pen pals with the kids in the safe house let me know that can be arranged we do specifically ask that it is an english speaking children because in india there's many languages in india every state has their own language like in karnataka which is where mysore is where my school is Bangalore, most people know Bangalore, it's in the state of Karnataka. They speak Hindi, Kannada, which is the language of Karnataka, and they speak English. So the two main languages that are spoke, spoken all over the country of India are Hindi and English. Okay, so that's why we specifically ask that it be English speaking kids, um, whether that's American, Canadian, Australian, South African, united kingdom whatever if you are an english speaking child um we would love to be able to set you up with a pen pal program with these children because the slum kids are not usually don't know english they usually can speak sometimes they don't even know hindi they can only speak their state language and so it's really important that they understand english so that they have their job prospects um, greatly improve if they can actually speak English, especially in places where they can maybe find jobs through the tourist market or be rickshaw drivers. I mean, that's a really good income for like a middle class Indian person, which is way better than what where they're coming from. And so, yeah. And it's also great for the kids, right? Like, as I was saying in the interview, like we did that initially for the kids to learn how to communicate through writing and reading English. That was the initial reason for us setting up that pen pal program but beyond that something even greater happened and that was friendship and love and understanding and it was great for the children here in america too because they were 
kind of being served a little bit of humble pie to understand how blessed they are and how they have the power. You know, with great power comes great responsibility. That's a Spider-Man quote. The Bible says to whom much is given, much is expected. And sometimes we don't realize how much we've actually been given until we see the alternative. And so for the kids here in Atlanta, the private school kids that I started this pin pal program with, they have also learned a lot from this as well. And, and that they have the ability just because of, of the family they were born into the opportunities the privilege they were born into i hate to even use that word but but in this case it is true that they can use that to help better somebody else to help give to somebody else who who is without the haves and the haves not right and there's a superhuman connection so if that's something that you would like if you are again if you are a teacher in a country or if you work for like the YMs or if you work for any organization that their children involved and you want these children to get involved in this pen pal program with the kids in the safe house, just let me know and I can arrange that for you. Um, but other than that, your money will go a very long way. And as Nicole said, we can't sit around and wait for some revaluation of our money to do good in the world. We can do good in the world right now. And as Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. You want to see change in this world? Be that change, right? All right, you guys. Um, once again, thank you so much for being patient these next couple of weeks. I'm very excited about getting my deep dives going again once I get back from traveling. Uh, I am Mr. Fox is coming back on the channel very, very, very soon. I'm very excited about that. I know you guys loved Mr. Fox. Um, He's a great guy. He's a very smart guy. He's one of the smartest guys I know. So um, we are going to be talking about actually a mystery that's plagued our world for a few years now and the Cassiopeians have an answer for us. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to look at the Cassiopeian board and see what the Cassiopeians have to say about this particular mystery. So, all right, you guys, I hope you're having a great week and I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>